Good morning, everybody. Today I'm going to talk to you about ducks and about doing the right thing. But first, I'd like to start with a tradition that I think we all enjoy. I'm going to show you all a picture of me when I was a kid. And here it is. <laughs> I know. This is me <laughs> when I was probably just a little younger than my own daughter Bowen is now. Um, she inherited my cheeks, as you can see. Um, and I really love those Oshkosh Bagosh overalls. My own, my own kids have worn them. They are now like threadbare and terrible, um, but they were really awesome back in the day. All right, so here's what I've got. Sometimes doing the right thing is hard work. It's dirty work. It's work that feels hopeless sometimes, work that you often feel unequipped for. It's work that can take forever, but you need to do it anyway. Find other people who want to do the right thing also. Keep doing the right thing together and don't give up. Don't live your life wondering what you could have done or what you all could have done together. So last summer on campus, we had a string of really hot days in late June. And on one of those really hot, humid late June days, at around three in the afternoon, the hottest part of the day, I got home to my house, which is attached to Thorn, and I heard this cheeping coming from somewhere in front of the dorm. So I followed the sound and I found the source pretty quickly. A duckling must have gotten separated from its mother, gotten lost, and fallen into a drainage well. And here's a photo of the well that I'm talking about. You guys can go check it out later, okay? It's a giant hole in the ground. It's right up against the dorm. It's under Kyle and CJ's room. Hi, Kyle. Hey, CJ. Mm -hmm. I see you guys. If you look closely at this picture, you'll see that this isn't just any grate, right? This grate is Dickensian, okay? It's really old. The bars are all welded together and then cemented into the ground. And there are pipes running down through the well in every direction all the way down. It's got to be at least five feet deep. It's dark. It's hard to see into. And there is years worth of accumulated leaves and grass and trash on the bottom, okay? And also on that day, on the bottom, the very, very bottom of this ridiculous setup, cheeping and looking and panicking at me was a tiny, trapped, alone baby duckling. So there was no question, right? We absolutely had to get this duckling out. Okay, it was going to die a horrible death if we left him in there. Again, it was a really super, super hot day. The duckling had no food, no water. It was just a baby. And I was worried that if we didn't get in there and get it out, some other animal would. It was going to either starve or dehydrate or get eaten if we didn't rescue it. It was definitely the right thing to do, and I knew it. So my wife and I, right, we talked and we figured out that if we could find a scoop with a really long handle, like some kind of ridiculous long ladle, right, we could just reach down in there. You can see there's kind of a, a gap next to that big red standing pipe, right? We could reach down in there, scoop the duckling up, and just hoist it out of the well. So that was our plan. The first thing we tried was a contraption actually that was there that the construction workers working on the bathrooms of Thorn had left for us. Okay, they had, I guess, seen the duckling earlier in the day, and they had nailed a plastic cup to the end of a long piece of wood, so like a really super long ladle, right? Just what we needed. And just to pause for a second, I want you guys to imagine the compassion and the empathy those workers showed. They have nothing to do with this place, okay? They were working hard on a very, very tight schedule all summer long at an exhausting job, and they either spent their breaks or stayed late to kneel down in the dirt to try to save a little duckling. But it was clear pretty quickly that this was going to be tough. This little guy was panicked. And instead of letting us scoop him up, he kept running away across the bottom of the well. We couldn't really follow him with the scoop because the pipes that get through the well are in the way. All right, you can see again, there's just a crisscross of things in there. And even on the off chance that we got the duckling to jump into the scoop, he kept freaking out when we lifted him up and he would jump out again, back into the dark, before we could get him anywhere near the surface. So over the course of the next two hours, two hours, we tried, among other ideas that make even less sense in hindsight, a cardboard box lined with comfortable Kleenex and lowered down on a string. Didn't really work. A plastic bag from Target, also lowered down on a string. And my older daughter's lacrosse stick which didn't even come close to reaching the bottom. 
We thought about it and we realized that this wasn't going to work. We just couldn't reach the bottom and get to that duckling effectively no matter how hard we tried. We needed a scoop with a much longer handle and we needed a person with much longer arms to reach down to do the scooping. We had one more idea left in the tank and to be honest, it felt like a long shot. We needed the tallest person we could find to scoop the duckling up using the longest lacrosse stick we could find. So I texted two people. First, I texted Miss Hines, who eagerly and graciously lent me one of her son's old long stick midi lacrosse sticks, like the five foot long ones, you guys know what I'm talking about, right? She was not phased at all when I told her I would probably bring it back trashed and scratched up and dirty. Second, I thought for a second about who on campus was a tall person and would be willing to get down in the dirt in front of Thorne on a very, very hot day in the middle of a heat wave to save a duckling. You guys have any guesses? So I sent McVeigh <laughs> a text. At, I checked 6.51 p.m. So now we're talking close to three and a half hours after I first heard the cheeping, okay, asking for help. And I'm sure it won't surprise you to know that by like 6.53, he had rounded the corner from Chase to Thorn at a dead sprint, okay? <laughs> Nor would it surprise you that his entire family was close behind him. So he went back to work, and here's an action shot of McVeigh and me. <laughs> Very flattering, right? At around seven o'clock. So three and a half hours in, or maybe even four hours in at that point, okay? As you can see, Mr. McVeigh used the long lacrosse stick from the Heinzes to try to scoop up the duckling, and I used the scoop the construction workers had left behind to try to guide the duckling, like push it, right, towards the lacrosse stick. And it was more panicked and running around than ever before. It was really, it felt really hopeless still. It wasn't going to work still, I thought. So we tried, and we missed. We tried again. The duckling got scared and jumped out of the pocket. We tried again. We got the duckling within a few inches of the surface before it squeezed through the laces and fell back into the dark. I know, right? We tried and missed again. We tried again. And we tried again. At some point, Mr. McVeigh's daughter, Kelly, ran back to Chase to get her butterfly net. And we tried again. And we got close again. And we missed again. Finally, this happened. I will accept applause, thank you. <laughs> so success. At around 7.30 that night, almost five hours after I had first heard the cheeping, we finally, finally got the duckling out of the well. You can see it, it's in the, the pink butterfly net that Kelly's holding in this photo. I'll show you a close-up in a second, it's adorable. All right, and I'm lucky to have, have had moments in my life in which I could celebrate, knowing for certain that I'd done the right thing and that it had worked. And this moment, I can honestly say, standing outside of Thorn with dirt all over me and a duckling in a butterfly net on a hazy, hot June night on a pretty empty boarding school campus, that is near the top of my list. And as promised, here's a close-up of the duckling. It's adorable, okay, he was adorable. I'll say it again. His feathers were soft, okay? He was not hurt at all. We named him Thorn before the McVeighs took him to a bird rescue organization on Cape Ann the next morning. And in my imagination, Thorn is now grown up, safe, happy, healthy, and has definitely learned his lesson about getting too close to five foot deep holes in the ground. All right, but here's the thing. So rescuing Thorn, it took a long time. It was inconvenient. It was hard, it was sweaty, it was dirty, ridiculous, really boring a lot of the time, frustrating almost all the time, and it was really hot out, and we weren't that good at it, to be honest, sorry, Mr. McVeigh, we weren't that great at it, right? And we didn't have the right tools, and it really just felt hopeless, right up until the very moment Kelly McVeigh was holding him in a butterfly net and beaming. We kept at it simply because we all instinctively understood it was the right thing to do. And that's the first part of what I want you to remember. Okay, and listen up. We're all going to have times in our lives when it's very clear, when it's very, very clear what the right thing to do is. And you'll know it when you see it. 
And when that time comes for you, which it definitely will, don't ignore that instinct. Even when doing that right thing is hard, or hopeless, or dirty, or unacknowledged, or frustrating, or going nowhere. Do it anyway, and stick with it, and don't give up, and keep up hope that maybe on the 100th try, or the 200th try, or the 201st try, you'll break the surface and escape the dark. If we had given up, and if we had just left Thorn in that well to die, I really don't think I'd ever be able to leave my house through the front door again without feeling awful, because the grate is right next to my house. Okay, and wondering if I could have saved him on the next try. Don't spend your life wondering if you could have succeeded at doing the right thing if you had just tried again. The second lesson is more subtle, okay, but it's also important. My wife and I could not have succeeded without help. We could have tried all night to do the right thing and save Thorn on our own, but eventually we needed the Heinz's long lacrosse stick. Okay, we needed Mr. McVeigh's height. We needed Kelly's butterfly net. And not to mention just the emotional boost of having help, having people around us, of being seen and being supported to finally get him out. So find the people around you who also know what the right thing to do is and ask them to do the right thing with you. Right, when we find each other, when we work together, when we support each other, when we see each other, when we use each other's strengths, we're going to win, whether it takes one try or 100 tries. And I'm so grateful to Mr. McVeigh and his family and to Mrs. Hines for their help. So thank you both, I appreciate it. So today, in this world around us, and even right here at Brooks, right, there's tons of right things that need doing. Okay, listing them would take our entire chapel time. Okay, my challenge to you, find just one right thing to do, and again, you'll know it when you see it. Find people with whom you can be stronger and never give up, ever, no matter what. So let's see what we can do together. Thank you.